What's up lovely humans and welcome to 17 Non. In today's episode, we're going to be making some Korean fried chicken baogas. Let's start by making up the dough for the baos or burger buns in this case. First, we're going to need to activate some yeast. To 200 ml of tepid water, we want to add 5 grams of instant dried yeast. Mix this well, then leave to sit for a few minutes to allow the yeast to get nice and funky. Whilst we wait, take out the largest mixing bowl you can get hold of. And to this rather large bowl, we want to add 370 grams of all-purpose flour, 5 grams of baking powder, 35 grams of white sugar, 30 grams of skim milk powder for some flavor, and to mimic a classic sesame seed bun, we're going to need 40 grams of ground black sesame seeds. And to make this, simply grind black sesame until nice and fine. Now we can give all of the dry ingredients a good mix. Then we can add all of the yeast mixture and 35 ml of neutral cooking oil. Stir vigorously until the flour becomes slightly more manageable. And at this point, when the dough is ready and looks a little something like this, it's now time to get busy. Go in with your hands and knead for around 5 to 10 minutes. And what we're looking for is to create one cohesive ball of dough. You can tell the dough is ready as we'll be left with quite a clean bowl. And at this point, we can take out the dough and place onto a worktop. Continue to knead this ball of goodness for another 10 minutes or so. And the point of kneading this again is to activate the gluten and to make this dough nice and elastic. And this will result in the most delicious burger bun. Fast forward 10 minutes and we can now gather the dough into a ball. And it's time for phase one of proving. Lightly grease the mixing bowl with some cooking oil, then we can add the dough. And we can cover to prevent this thing from drying out. The best way I find to prove at home is in the oven with some hot water. The hot water will create enough humidity and this is perfect for proving. Place the dough into the oven and allow to prove for 90 minutes and we'll come back to you shortly. Whilst we wait for the dough to prove, we can move on to preparing everything else. And the soul of this burger is going to be some Korean fried chicken. The dough is going to make 6 buns, so we need 6 chicken thighs. The first thing we need to do is to remove the thigh bone. To do this, simply slice around the bone to expose. Try and keep the knife nice and tight as we don't want to waste any thigh meat here. When ready, slice away the bone and we now have a boneless chicken thigh. Trim away any excess fat then repeat this for the rest of the thighs. And we can set these aside and it's time for a quick marinade. We're going to need to marinate these chicken thighs for at least half an hour. And to make the marinade, in a small bowl add 1 teaspoon of white sugar, 3 tablespoons of light soy, 2 tablespoons of sesame oil, 2 tablespoons of mirin, 5 grams of grated ginger, and finally a pinch of black pepper. Give this a good mix to dissolve the sugar, then we can add this marinade to the chicken thighs. This marinade will not only add flavour, but will also make the chicken super crispy when we come to fry. Coat nice and well, then leave the marinade for at least half an hour. To take the chicken to that next level when fried, we're going to make up a gochujang glaze. In a mixing bowl, add 3 tablespoons of gochujang, 2 tablespoons of gochugaru, 2 tablespoons of good light soy, 3 tablespoons of mirin, 2 tablespoons of sesame oil, and finally 2 tablespoons of clear honey. Give this a really good mix and our glaze is ready for now. We're going to use this to glaze the fried chicken in when it's cooked. So keep this to one side for now and we'll come back to this at the very end. Every good burger needs some form of sauce, and that's exactly what we're going to make next. Again, in a mixing bowl, add 5 tablespoons of good mayo, around 1 generous tablespoon of gochujang, and finally the juice of half a lemon to lighten up the sauce. Give this a good mix, and we should be left with a spicy but creamy mayo. This sauce will work perfectly for this burger, and we'll see you at the very end. Now to prepare a few vegetables that will make our bao burger a little bit lighter. First, we want to make some pickled cucumber. In a mixing bowl, add 2 tablespoons of white sugar and 6 tablespoons of rice vinegar. Mix this well to dissolve the sugar and this is now our pickling liquid. Now to the liquid, we want to shave one cucumber into ribbons. And these cucumbers are going to be the perfect balance for our Korean fried chicken. Mix the cucumbers well, then place these to one side. Next, we can finally slice half a red cabbage and we're going to use this to make a coleslaw. When nicely shredded, you can go ahead and add this to a large mixing bowl. Add one to two tablespoons of our spicy mayo made earlier, then mix really well. After quickly tasting this, I thought it still needed something. So I decided to add a few drops of the cucumber pickling liquid to sharpen things up. And now we're mixed, our coleslaw is ready, and it's time to go back to the bowels. After a good 90 minutes of proving, our dough should now have doubled in size. Seems to be nice and gassy, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Knock back the dough to release of any unwanted air. Now take out the dough, place onto a worktop and begin to briefly knead again. Knead for around 5 minutes and gather the dough back into a ball again. And at this point we can divide the dough into 6 equal sized pieces. 
we're after decent sized buns here. So I'd say we're looking for each piece to be roughly the size of your palm. Now that all the pieces are roughly the same size, we can take each piece and roll it into tight balls. When rolled, we should be left with something like this. Looks small for now, but this is going to prove again. Now take a small sheet of greaseproof paper and lightly brush with some neutral oil. Place the bow on top and store onto a tray. Repeat this for each ball of dough, we should be left with 6 bowels. Cover and place these back into the oven and prove for a final 30 minutes. Now to fry some chicken. This is 1.5 cups of potato starch and this will make the chicken super crispy. Add the chicken thighs to the dredge and evenly coat in the starch. Oh and if you can't get hold of potato starch then cornstarch will work just as fine. When dredged, dust off for the excess and this chicken is now ready to fry. We're going to double fry this and this will give us super crispy chicken. Place a generous amount of cooking oil onto a medium to high heat and bring the temperature up to around 150 degrees centigrade. Add the chicken in batches and we want to fry these for around 4-5 to five minutes. As we fry them we want to keep the chicken moving around and this will prevent any of the sides from burning. After 4-5 to five minutes of frying our chicken should now be pretty much cooked. Place onto a wire cooling rack and allow to drain. Not too crispy just yet, but that's the plan next. Try and clean the oil and bring the temperature up to 180 degrees centigrade. Add the chicken back into the hot oil and at this point we want to fry for a further 2 minutes. I'm not sure why but there's something super satisfying about deep frying chicken. 2 minutes of frying later and our chicken should now be super crispy. Remove from the hot oil and place back onto a cooling rack to drain. And to turn this fried chicken into Korean fried chicken, it's now time to glaze. Place a pan onto a medium to high heat and add some of the gochujang glaze that we made earlier. When just about boiling, we can now add the fried chicken. Coat in the glaze and we want the chicken to get nice and sticky. This Korean fried chicken is so so good and even editing this makes me pretty hungry. After a few minutes and nicely glazed, we can remove from the heat and place the chicken onto a cooling rack. And next, every good burger needs some cheese, so we're going to add some mozzarella. I'm not sure why, but mozzarella and Korean food work really well together. Glaze over the top so that the cheese makes a little blanket for our chicken. And all that's left is to finish the bowels. By this point, once again, the bowels should have doubled in size. And all they need now is a brief steam. Add the bowels to your go-to steamer and make sure to leave enough room between each one. And when the steamer's loaded up, we're now ready to go. Take the steamer and place over a double boiler that's on a high heat. Then we're going to steam these bowels for around 8 to 10 minutes. Fast forward and our buns are now ready. Carefully remove from the heat then set to one side. Leave to cool for a few minutes then when cool, these buns are now ready to be sliced. These are super fluffy and I can't wait to get building. Slice the buns into half and we now have a not so traditional burger bun. And all we need to do now is get building some burgers. Now to finally finish this burger. Let's start by adding a good amount of that spicy gochujang coleslaw first. Next we can lay down some of those delicious pickled cucumbers. Next we can add the sole of this sandwich, the Korean fried chicken. Top that with a spoonful of the spicy mayo. And finally hit that with some freshly chopped spring onion. And this my friends is a mighty fine Korean fried chicken burger. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanted to mount this up on my wall. But for this video's sake, I guess we should sample this thing. And yes, as you can see, I'm clearly struggling to slice this thing in half. Finally got there, it's now time to check out this thing's cross section. Still struggling to keep the focus on my camera, but we finally got there. Thank you all for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to slap that subscribe button. Oh, and how this thing tasted? My reaction to this should clear that one up. See you guys on the next episode, have fun and peace.